Oh, it's so good. <laughs> that show, 99% of what they do in that show is real. <laughs> and the 1% they got wrong is you could never get an education bill past that fast. <laughs> Train, all that's okay. <laughs> no, I mean, we didn't. We, you know, w th there were so many discussions, actually. It was very interesting because people knew the initial conversations that David and I were having, or Bo Will and I were having, <clears throat> about where should he be from. There was a whole conversation about could he be East Coast? Could he be a New York congressman? Could he be, you know, so there was never a... And actually, what ended up what ended up making us decide that he should be from this place, Gaffney, you know, South Carolina, was that Bo's father is from South Carolina. And so, when we were working on dialogue and scripts and stuff, Bo called his dad one night and said, "Dad, will you read just like I'm going to write this down and then read it back to me?" So he gave him like four of the direct address lines, and his dad read them back. And then Bo called me and said, "I think it has to be." It's like just hearing that, but it's. But what we also liked about it was that it was so specific that it didn't. It wouldn't sound like Clinton, and we we felt very strongly we did not want people to think that's what we were yeah. up to or that's what we we're doing. Obviously, people make their own parallels to, to things, but there was never our intention was to sort of play in the real world politics. We we wanted to be in an alternative universe, and it may well be a universe that some people prefer. <laughs> Uh, so this year, uh, Robin Wright directed some episodes, and she did last year as well. And, um, tell us about that experience, from working together, and then when she steps out. Well, what's great about, uh, first of all, Robin and I have known each other for a very, very, very long time, um, since kind of we both began. Uh, and we did a film together years ago called Hurley Burley. Uh, Thank you. You were the five that saw that. <laughs> this back into the box office. Yeah. Um, and and um, so we knew each other and we trusted each other. We spent a lot of time together just socially with families and stuff. And um, so we trusted each other right from the beginning and, and, and have literally been... If people had any idea how much we laugh on set... Because I know, you know the show's very serious and there's a lot of serious storylines and... You know what this couple goes through and what they're what they're willing to do, but we literally I, I can't imagine how much unused footage you could probably do a twenty hour behind the scenes of us fucking up on camera. <laughs> it's fun to watch. Just because one of my favorite things to do is to make Robin laugh because when I make Robin laugh, her makeup runs and then they have to redo her makeup. <laughs> So I actually, I had a lot of time to shooting day because, <laughs> and I do all kinds of, I do voices and, I, and silly characters that just absolutely make her laugh. And what's great is that her uh, drive, her intention, her understanding, her openness is just the same when she's playing Claire as when she's directing. There's no like, well suddenly she becomes a director. She's as much fun. Um, and, and it's been great to sort of watch her grow as a director because she was very nervous when she first started and then like the first day was just like okay like you've been doing this forever like mm -hmm. she was so confident um, and she's always questioning and always pushing us to go to different places and it's just a joy I love I love it when she directs so. I've been meaning to ask you this from since the first day I met you but the the first remember the very first table read of the very first episode and at that you've done this hundreds and hundreds of times I'm guessing and, and at that time, it's usually just the words coming out of people's mouths, and you're kind of getting to know each other and getting to know the material. But I noticed in that day that you, Francis was already, you already had Francis in your head. You already had Francis. I mean, you were reading him for the first time at the table, pr pretty close to Francis. How, how, what process, where does that start for you? Um, a really good joint. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Uh, no. No. Uh, you know, sometimes what you're doing in, 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 t in a table read is, t is to... Look, I, th I think the purpose for a table read is to find out what are the script's problems versus what are the actor's problems. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, and I've done this many, many times over many, many years, you know, sometimes 
you do it, hey, will you come and do a script reading? And I'm like, yeah, sure. And then you show up and the actor's just like not committed to it. And then you go later, like your energy really seemed down. They go, yeah, no, I didn't really like his script. And I go, then why did you say yes to reading it when the purpose of a read-through is for it to be played at such a pitch that you can then figure out what are the problems that the text has or the story has versus was that like an actor problem? Was that like somebody who's not really into it? Or that, so for me, the table read is more than just a chance to read it. It's a chance to sort of float it in the air, be able to poke holes in some of the ideas. Because very often what we do, we'll come out of a table read and say, that scene's not right. That scene is not right. It's a, it's a, it's a good idea for a scene, or it's not right. Or sometimes I'll do, very often, our team of writers is always <laughs> really surprised, because I'm the one who's like saying, we should cut that line. And like sometimes it's like a paragraph, like a direct address, yeah. and I go, I don't need to say any of that. And they go, why? And I go, because the audience knows where we are, and all I have to do is just look. <laughs> they know what I'm thinking, and I don't have to you know, do a lot of verbiage. So I, I often cut dialogue, um, which the writers think is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do, you, do people expect it of you when you come? Because it's funny, I was kind of observing, it was, it was such a great day, but like, other folks were trying on the character a little bit, and you were very comfortable in the suit already. Uh, well, we had been doing a lot of work, and I'd also yeah. been doing, by that point, I'd been doing a lot of work with my vocal coach, and I'd really been thinking about the, you know, sometimes for me, in terms of the writing, it's so interesting how sometimes it's not about the writing, it's about the rhythm of the words. It's about the words that are chosen, and how they rhythmically fall out in this particular accent. And sometimes I just say, guys, I don't have enough words. I literally need three more words in this sentence in order to get the rhythm to land. Is I'm, I'm a big believer in rhythm and, and, and that um, words can be like music and, and you have to find that where the beat is, where the pause is, where the silence is. So this season, uh, new showrunners. Um, uh, Melissa James Gibson and Frank Buglisi. And how was... After you get a rhythm, and how how is that transition? How's the change? It really, it really didn't feel like a transition in any big way because they'd been uh, our writers prior. So what we did this year, you know, since Bo had moved on, what we did this year was we chose not to hire new writers or get a new voice in the room. We kept the same team that we had the previous season. I think that was a very wise choice um, because sometimes when you get someone new, you know, it's like they want to establish themselves, and so we felt like. You know, it wasn't broken, and so we didn't need to fix that aspect of it. And I found uh, um, it, was a, it was great working with both of them. We had a really, really good time this year. Do you, do you know things about Francis today that you didn't know year one, year two? I know things about Francis that you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but you might find out <laughs> later on. <laughs> now, that's actually the fun thing is like, um, there are certain decisions that we made five and a half years ago. Like, I knew I wanted Frank to go silver over the course of the series. So that meant we had to know that because I've gone through now seven hair pieces. But we knew we were doing that. And it was very interesting to me. Like, it was only like two seasons ago that people were like, are you going gray in like the show? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, how do you do that? And I was like, we decided a long time ago that I was going to go gray. That's the only way you can make that sort of transition work. Um, so little stuff that slowly an audience starts to figure out. So House of Cards was, was born in the UK. Uh, you had this great run of running the old Vic, 10 years running the old Vic. 11, yeah. Uh, 11, sorry. Didn't mean sorry. to cut that short. Yeah, that's pretty exciting. Uh, and you, they clearly uh, appreciated it because you were given an honorary knighthood. But now the queen knighted yeah. me, yes. You have popped to applaud. <laughs> It just means that I now, I insist that my friends now call me Sir Space a lot. <laughs> Sir Space a lot. <laughs> any, any, anything uh, with the knighthood? That you, you have a card or something that comes with the knighthood? That you need? Actually, well, first of all, the knighthood itself is a, is a rather beautiful medallion. But a, a friend of mine then had made like little miniature ones. So you can actually wear them on your lapel. Oh, that's cool. yeah, it's very, very nice. Do, do you have um, of, of that run at the old Vic? I mean, because you, you, while you were doing that, you were still bouncing around. You were, it was a very busy period in your life. Was there? Um, do you remember anything vividly about those performances, of the old Vic? That 
stick with you? Um, I mean, look, the, the what I learned uh, while I was there, the those eleven seasons, doing a play or two plays every year, working with the directors I worked with, the writers that we worked with, uh, companies, and just that place, that stage that's been standing there since eighteen eighteen, where the greatest actors uh, and actresses uh, of their generation worked those boards. You just feel it. You just, they're like the friendliest ghosts in town. They just, they just, they want you to succeed. They carry you um, in the boards. You feel um, a part of something that's much bigger than you and that you are a part of a continuity um, of experience. And so, the kinds of people I met there, the kinds of friendships that I made, um, the fact that Peter O'Toole came to see nearly everything that we did, and he always sat in the front row in the student seats. It's <laughs> intimidating. And well, I never knew he was there because I don't look. Um, I don't. I don't look and see who's out there because I it would completely throw me. Um, I hate it when someone comes back and says, so, Catherine Hepburn's out there, and you're like, shut the fuck up! <laughs> Crazy. But what I also loved about O'Toole is that I knew where he stood every time. If he liked something, he would let me know. If he didn't like something, he would let me know. He came backstage once and was furious with me. And I, we did this play, and he liked the play, but he did not like the way I was lit. You can't see your face! <laughs> I said, what do you mean? He said, you're not lit properly. I said, I'm not lit. If you don't know you're not lit, you're in the wrong fucking business. <laughs> well, Unfortunately, this time has flown, sir. So thank you so, so much. Thank you for tonight. Good housekeeping. Yes, yes, go ahead. Tell everybody that if you'd like to see more of this great man, tickets are now available for Daro on Ticketmaster. You can see I'm doing, I'm doing this play Darrow. Um, yes. Max Darrow, which I've done a couple of times. But we're doing it in a very unusual spot. Um, we, I, I decided that I needed to do it in a place where I could play to more people and also that was in the round. So I'm taking this play to Arthur Ashe Stadium in Queens, New York, where they ah. usually do the U.S. Open. That you gotta see. We're gonna do a play. That's amazing. On June 11th, you'll be hosting the Tony Awards. <laughs> Most importantly, on May 30th. Oh, what's happening then? House of Cards oh. premieres on Netflix. Thank you for joining us. I hope you will join us across the street at our FYC installment, and thank you again. Thank you all so much. So what's